Welcome to the Medical Terminology Podcast on iTunes U. This episode is Chapter 2, Part 4, The Body Planes and Landmarks. This episode, as you can see, is going to be different from the other ones. In this one, you're all going to have a chance to get up and move around. This is great for those of you who are kinesthetic learners. First, we're going to talk about the body planes. The first plane is the sagittal plane. A sagittal plane is any plane that goes up and down through the body like this. It's going to cut perpendicular to your face. If we look at this piece of paper as a plane, it's going this way. Now, one particular sagittal plane we're interested in is the mid-sagittal plane. It cuts right through the middle of the body. It divides the body into equal left and right halves. The next plane is the frontal plane. The frontal plane cuts through the body this way. And it's going to cut the body into equal front and back parts. That's the frontal plane. And finally, we have a horizontal plane. A horizontal plane cuts horizontally through the body, like this. Also, it's known as the transverse plane. A transverse or horizontal plane cuts the body into a top and bottom half. Using these planes as a reference, we can talk about how we label different parts of the body or different spaces with respect to these planes. For example, if we're talking about the frontal plane that cuts the body this way, we label the front part of the body using the term anterior, which means the front, or we can also use the term ventral, which means the front. If we're talking about the back part of the body, the back side of this plane, then we're talking about the posterior part of the body, or we can also use the term dorsal, either refers to the back. Now, we can use anterior and posterior in a different way also. In addition to just referring to the front part of the body, which is what? Anterior. Or the back part of the body, which is what? posterior, we can also use those terms in a directional sense, as in saying one thing is in front of another. For example, inside the body, we could say that the belly button is anterior to the lungs, meaning it's in front of the lungs. The lungs are inside the body. One thing is in front of the other, so one thing is anterior to the other. Same thing with posterior. We can say that one thing is behind another thing by saying one thing is posterior to another. For example, we could say that the spinal column is posterior to the heart, meaning it's behind the heart. Okay, the next two terms we can look at is referenced by the horizontal or transverse plane. Anything that is above that plane, or in an upward direction, we would say is superior. Superior means above. It can also mean uppermost, as in, again, one thing is superior to another. One thing is above another. The opposite of that is beneath or inferior. If something is inferior, it is beneath another thing. Now we have two other terms that are similar but not identical to these. We have a term called cephalic. Cephalic means literally pertaining to the head. So if something is cephalic, it's towards the head. Now this isn't exactly the same thing as superior. Superior just means something is above something else. If something is cephalic, it's near or pertaining to the head. Okay, so we, if we want to talk about something being towards the head, we're probably going to use cephalic or cephalic lead. 
if we're just saying something is above something else or something is above, we're going to say it's superior. Now looking again beneath or below, we have a term called caudal. Caudal literally means pertaining to the tail. That's caudal, pertaining to the tail. So caudal is not identical to inferior. Inferior means just that it's beneath or below something else. If something's caudal, we mean it's pertaining to the tail. We can also say it's towards the feet. Okay? So that's not quite the same thing as just saying it's beneath or below. So we need to be careful about that. Okay. Now we can talk about landmarks with respect to appendages. If we have an appendage like an arm or a leg, we can reference where we are on those appendages. Okay? If we're looking at the arm, and we're talking about the part of the arm that is closest to where it joins to the body, we would say that is proximal. This bone in the arm here is called the humerus. If we're talking about the end that is by the shoulder or closest to the body, we're talking about the proximal humerus. On the other hand, if we're interested in the end of appendage that is farthest from where it joins the body, we use the term distal. So we would say the fingers are distal, whereas the shoulder is proximal on the arm. If we're just talking about the humerus, we have the proximal end that's close to the body, where it joins the body, and then we have the distal end, which is where it is far away from the body. Proximal, distal. Finally, we can talk about where something's located relative to the midline of the body. Again, if you remember that mid-sagittal tongue that goes right down through the middle of the body, making an equal left and right side, we have a term that describes being towards the middle of the body or towards the midline. That term is medial. If something is medial, it's towards the midline. On the other hand, if something is away from the midline, out yonder, we would say it's lateral. Lateral is away from the midline, whereas medial is towards the midline. Okay, let's do a little bit of reviewing. What is the term that we use for a horizontal plane that cuts through the body like this? Well, we would call that a transverse plane. We could also call it a horizontal plane, which I gave that away. But transverse would be the fancier name. What is the name that we give to any plane that is cutting through the body like this? Cutting it vertically into left and right sides. Not necessarily equal, but just left and right sides. That's a sagittal plane. Now what do we call the special sagittal plane that cuts the body into equal left and right sides? Well, that's the mid-sagittal plane. Mid or middle. Mid-sagittal. Alright, and there's one more plane. What do we call the plane that cuts vertically through the body this way and gives us equal front and right sides. Well, we call that the frontal plane. Okay, now suppose we have a transverse plane cutting through the body like this. What do we call the space or the direction that means above or uppermost? That's superior. What do we call the space or the direction beneath the plane or down or lowermost? That's going to be 
inferior. Okay. What's the term we use that means towards the head or pertaining to the head? That's cephalic. Okay. And finally we have the term that means towards the tail or pertaining to the tail. It can also mean towards the feet. That's caudal. All right, and then if you remember, we have the frontal plane that cuts this way. What do we call the front side of the body or the front surface? We do have two possibilities there. We could use anterior. We could also use ventral. And if you remember, anterior also has a special usage. How else can we use anterior? We can use anterior as a direction to mean one thing is anterior versus the other. One thing is in front of the other. We can't use ventral that way. We wouldn't say one thing is ventral to the other. That doesn't make sense. Okay, and then dealing with the back side, what are the two terms that can just mean the back side? Okay, I hope you remembered posterior. And you know we talk about the bud as being posterior. That's a good mnemonic right there. The posterior. Or what else? We could say dorsal. And again, posterior can mean towards the back, we can use it to mean one thing is in back of or behind another. One thing is posterior to another. But we would not say one thing is dorsal to another. Okay, those are the major directional terms. We also have terms related to the appendage. What is the term that means something as at the far end of an appendage. That's distal, like the distal end of the arm or the distal end of the humerus. What is the term for the end of an appendage that is closest to, to the body or it joins to the body? Well, that's proximal, like the proximal humerus or the elbow is proximal here on the radius and ulna, which is the term for the two bones in here. We're going to learn the bones in chapter 3. Don't need to worry about that now. Just know what I'm talking about in terms of the body parts. Okay, proximal and distal. Or we can say proximal, distal. Closest to the body, proximal. Further away, distal. Okay, now one last pair. We're talking about the midline. And again, what is the plane that cuts through the midline like that? Equal left and right sides. It is called the mid-sagittal plane. Good, if you remember that. If something is towards the midline or towards the mid-sagittal plane, it is called medial. I hope you remember that, medial. And if something is away from the midline, out away from the body this way, or it could be that way, either side away from the midline, what is that called? That's lateral. All right. Well, that reviews the planes and the major body directions. Now we've got another thing to talk about, and that's the anatomic landmarks. Things like cavities and also the abdominal regions. Let's start with the abdominal regions. Go ahead and take your hands, put it right up here at your ribs, right up in here. This area right at the bottom of the ribs, right where the rib cage is, is called the hypochondriac region. Don't confuse that with someone who's a hypochondriac, like someone who pretends they're sick or thinks they're sick when they're not. Hypochondriac literally means below or pertaining to below cartilage, or in this case we mean rib cage. So this is the left and right hypochondriac region. 
Now, if you run your hands down a little further so that you're in like the small of your back, right in here, this is known as the lumbar region. Left and right lumbar. Then you move down further, you're at the hip bone, right here. This is the left and right iliac, iliac pertaining to the hip bone. So we have hypochondriac, lumbar, iliac. The area right in the middle of the stomach, where the belly button is, is called the umbilicus. And that hopefully is easy to remember, because we've all heard of the umbilical cord that's attached right there where the belly button is, that's the umbilicus. Anything above the umbilicus is epigastric. Epi, remember, means above. Gastric is pertaining to the stomach. So epigastric, the area pertaining to above the stomach, this region right here. Finally, we have the hypogastric. Hypo means beneath or below or decreased, diminished. Beneath the umbilicus, beneath the, the stomach, that's the hypogastric region. And finally, we have the groin area down in here. This is the inguinal region. That's nine different regions when you include left and right. And that is a way we can lay out or identify different areas of the abdomen. So let's review a little bit. What's the area right where the belly button is? That's the umbilical. What about if you grab the small of the back of here, left or right of the belly button? What's that? That's the lumbar region, left and right. What if you're touching the area right at the rib cage, right beneath the rib cage here. That is the left and right hypogastric region. And what about where the hip bone is? Left and right iliac region. Then above the stomach, epigastric. And finally beneath the stomach, you've got the hypogastric, also we've got inguinal. Okay? So those are the regions of the abdomen. And finally we have body cavities. These are spaces inside the body where organs can reside. And this is where we need to remember the exact concept of hierarchy because cavities are hierarchical. There are major big cavities and then there are cavities inside those cavities. Okay? Let's start out with the front part of the body. If we look at from the neck down to the bottom of the abdomen, this whole front area, that's all one big cavity known as the ventral cavity. Ventral means the front, remember, this whole front area. Now, within the ventral cavity, we have sub-areas. First of all, we have the area in the chest, where the lungs are, where the heart is. That cavity is known as the thoracic cavity, thoracic pertaining to the chest. The next cavity is the abdominal cavity. That's the abdomen, that's where all the internal organs of digestion are, like the stomach, the intestines, pancreas, liver, all that stuff. And finally, you have the pelvic cavity. That's where the organs of reproduction are. Now, actually, abdominal and pelvic aren't separate. They're all one thing called abdominopelvic. But it's helpful to think about them as separate. The thoracic region actually is separated from the abdomen by the diaphragm, and that's the muscle down here that helps make your lungs move when you breathe in and out. Okay? The cavity in the back side of the body is known as the dorsal cavity. It's from the head all the way down the back. 
Dorsal again, meaning the back, just like we have the ventral as the front. Ventral, dorsal. Now the dorsal breaks down into subparts also. First of all, we have the area where the brain is, the cranial cavity inside the skull. That's the cranial cavity. Then we have what is known as the spinal cavity from the neck on down the back. That's where the spine is, the spinal column. So we have the cranial cavity, we have the spinal cavity, all of that together is the dorsal cavity. Okay, now let's review. What do we call the cavity that's the whole front part of the body here? And remember, what is the term for the front of the body? The ventral, ventral cavity, like the ventral surface of the body. The ventral cavity divides into parts. First of all, what's the part where the chest is? That's the thoracic cavity. And then beneath that, under the diaphragm, we have what? We have the abdomino-pelvic cavity. It's really one cavity. But we divide it into the abdomen, where like the organs of digestion are and then the pelvic cavity where reproductive organs are. Reviewing the back side, what's the term for the cavity? The whole back side, head on down the back. The term we give for the whole back side of the body is dorsal, the dorsal cavity. And then if we break that into two parts, we have where the brain is in the skull, that's what? the cranial cavity. And then finally, the spine is in the back here. That is called what? The spinal cavity. Okay, well I think doing this kind of kinesthetic learning may really be helpful to you in terms of keeping these things straight, especially if you tend to be a kinesthetic learner. If you're more of a visual learner like me, you can kind of look at the chart and say, okay, I see the hierarchy. I can put this together, but it can really help you, especially with things like distal, proximal, is that right? No, I did that backwards, didn't I? Distal, proximal, it can help you learn those things. Anterior, and what? Posterior, very good. You want to just keep practicing this and reviewing this until you get these down. Okay, well that's all we have for this part of the Medical Terminology Podcast.